Welcome to the Players' Corner on the Giants Huddle Podcast. I'm Jonathan Casillas, and we welcome in Giants wide receiver yes, Isaiah Hodgins. Yes, sir. What's up, bro? How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. Uh, happy to be here. Yeah, no yeah. doubt, man. Yes, All right, so you just stepped off the field just now. Mm-hmm. OTAs is, is, is in full swing. Mm-hmm. What y'all do today? Uh, today was just, you know, like a little lift and a walkthrough day. We just had uh, two practices in a row, so... Uh, you know, freshen up the legs a little bit and then, you know, hit hit the ground running again tomorrow. So. Yeah. So one more practice, weekend off, and mm-hmm. y'all start again on Monday. Yep, yep. So Dave Ball's doing a good job of taking care of y'all. Oh, yeah, he, he definitely does a good job. I mean, in season and out of season for sure, just uh, taking care of his guys. So. Okay, okay. So you a Cali boy? Yeah. yeah Born yeah. and raised? Yeah. Okay, you went to high school there, then you went to Oregon State. Mm-hmm. What was that transition like going from Cali to Oregon State? Yeah, it, it was definitely a little different, but I wanted something different. You know, like all of my – top five were like out of state schools like i think it was like michigan oregon oregon state um colorado and uh i think nebraska or something but i definitely just wanted to like experience something different so um you know it it was for sure different but um you know i loved it up there so it was cool no doubt so i'm undrafted yeah i'm from jersey Mm -hmm. (laughs) i went to wisconsin yeah yeah and then i was i was (laughs) that's that's different different. yeah that's different so i I went undrafted had some some stuff going on in college you were a late round draft pick Mm -hmm. six round but you got your opportunity to play for buffalo yeah how was that like transitioning from oregon state yeah being a really good wide receiver of course Mm -hmm. going to six round did you feel slighted in any type of way you felt like okay i got my opportunity yeah um you know, it was a little different just given the the receiver room that we had at the time. Uh, I had Gabe Davis drafted in front of me. So, you know, just with how the NFL usually works, like, you know, the higher draft picks are going to get more of the opportunity, more of the plays and everything. And then um, being there with Diggs and a bunch of guys. So, like, it, it felt good to definitely, like, be in that, like, atmosphere. But I knew, like, just kind of, like, going into it, like, okay, like, whatever opportunity I do get, even if it's few, like, I got to try to make the most of it. And, you know, it happened a couple unfortunate events of me getting hurt um, my rookie year and stuff. But I was definitely able to learn a lot just being in a room full of uh, veteran guys. I mean, that's rough. You draft a sixth round. Mm-hmm. You're already climbing uphill, yeah. that uphill yeah, battle. Yeah. I know what that's about. Yeah, for real. And then you get hurt on top of that, Yeah, right? So did you feel like in any type of way in those couple years that you were in Buffalo, did you feel like, man, I don't know if I can do this yeah. long term? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you feel that way in any type of way? I think my second year, I for I for sure was feeling like that, but I was fresh off an of injury. So I was trying to, you know, like get my hopes up and like come back story. And then my third year when I had a really good off season camp, everything, and then a real good preseason, like I was for sure like, all right, like I'm making a scene. And if I'm not, bare minimum, someone else is picking me up. And when neither of those things happened, I was like, dang, like, I don't know how much longer I could do this. And, you know, um, luckily I ended up getting brat, uh, brought back up to the active in uh, Buffalo for six weeks. And then when they cut me, then the Giants picked me up. So, you know, it was kind of a fortunate situation for me. So. Wave three times? The last time? Was it, was it the third time? Uh, I was on IR my rookie year because I was got hurt and okay. then waved twice. So, okay, I got you. Yeah. So that last time, getting waved. Yeah. Before actually, the actually no, no, you're right. Three times. Yeah, three, yeah, times? Yeah, three times? Three times, yeah, yeah. So the last time getting waved. Yeah. Before the Giants signed you. Yeah. How was that? Yeah. I know that was some uh, scary stuff. Yeah, right? At least was, some questioning, right, yeah. about yourself. No, it, it was tough for sure. I mean, it was on the trade deadline, like trade deadline day. You know, I wasn't really expecting anything to happen. I've been on the active for six weeks now. I've played in some games. So, you know, um, it was kind of just trying to improve week by week. And, um and then I just, you know, I was just playing video games, like literally chilling. Yeah. Like they gave us like the day off because, you know, it was kind of like, you know, trade deadline. We weren't really doing that much. It was whatever. And then I got that phone call and I'm like, yo, no way. Like, and <laughs> ended up getting cut. And I was just like, this is crazy. Like yeah. I was not expecting it. It's different when you're kind of like, oh, it might, it might not. But I wasn't expecting it at all. It right. came out of nowhere. But then literally, I mean, not even 24 hours later, like, got all the phone calls from Dayball and Joe and everyone from here in the front office. So then it was like, dang, like I'm packing my bags, I'm leaving. So. And you were active right away. Yeah. Right, yeah, or the active yeah. roster. So yeah. you were from P squad, waved several times. Yeah. Injury reserve, mm-hmm. which is, I mean, I've been there. That, yeah, that's yeah. A, tough, it's a dark tough, time, tough, right? Sure. Now you're active with the New York Giants. Yeah. Yeah. How, like, how did that happen? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just a lot of patience and perseverance, man. Just um, staying, staying strong in my faith, uh, giving glory to God, and then just continuing just to like work and, uh, I mean, my dad played in the NFL and he was a huge help for me of like just helping me see like the big picture and just like, hey, like, I know you wanted to sit here and like come in and play as a rookie, but maybe, you know, God had you sit here with a veteran led team so you could sit here and be ready for your opportunity when it came for the Giants. And, you know, now that I look back, I think that's true because, I mean, I was in rooms with people from 
Diggs to Cole Beasley to Tavon Austin, Emmanuel Sanders, like some real like guys, yeah. like and then Gabe Davis was balling, Isaiah McKenzie, just like a bunch of people. Jameson Crowder was over there with us, and like there was just so many vets that I was just like learning from. John Brown, just like week in and week out, like from rehab routines to like off the field to like when and how they get their massages to like post practice to how they practice like everything and I was just soaking all that up just asking questions asking questions just trying to get right so then when it's my turn you know I can kind of sit here and implement all that stuff into my daily habits routines and practice habits and then hopefully be able to pass that on to someone too so so you're 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 still young in the game mm -hmm. you're a vet now though you're yeah. a young vet in yeah. the game but you're battle tested bro mm -hmm. like the stuff you've been through in those little bit of time that you mm -hmm. have been in the league yeah. which is almost beyond the average of yeah. the NFL player you already been battle tested and you have that that stock from your dad playing mm -hmm. in two Super Bowls winning yeah. one yeah. limited time I saw I was checking out <laughs> yeah, his stats yeah. like yeah. that but he played fullback yeah, so it yeah, wasn't yeah. He even was back then even back then they wasn't really giving the ball to mm -hmm. fullback nah, that nah, much nah, right? nah. but your dad was there yeah. did your dad have you in football early mm -hmm. was it something that he kind of laid back yeah. or was it something that he was like you're playing football. Nah, like, yeah. How did that go with your dad it, being young? It was like a mixture of both. Like he always told me like, you know, like whatever you do, I'll support it. Just do it a hundred percent. But I was just around football literally from like, I just grew up watching him. So yeah. like, I want to do nothing but be like my dad, like play football. I was around all these hall of fame guys that he was around. So like, I wanted, like I was playing football at six, seven years old. Like I was like in love with it. Like, and I still have like a letter that I wrote myself in like elementary school just talking about how like I'm gonna be in the league and what teams I'm gonna play for and like all that stuff so it was definitely just like always like a goal for mine to uh, be here and you know flourish to the next level so well you check that box <laughs> yeah so when you got signed I'm, I've been working with Schmelk I've been working with Lance Meadow we do the pregame radio show no one knew who you were bro. Yeah, yeah you know we're sitting there like Isaiah Hodgins who, yeah. who is this guy right away though bro you proved that not only did you belong yeah. that you're a very capable wide receiver and mm -hmm. NFL player and you could possibly have a long career. Yeah, where did that come from? Like, how are you just ready for the moment as yeah. soon as you got here? And we're talking about New York City, bro. Yeah, yeah. not upstate New York. Yeah, yeah. Both of them. yeah. talking about New different. York City, man, where the media is all on you. Yeah. I know the first game after you had a couple of catches and a touchdown, they're all on you. Every yeah. single camera yeah. is on you. Mm -hmm. How was that like coming here and being, you know, a, a go-to guy right away? Yeah. I mean, it, it was for sure different. Just adapting to the media aspect for sure because it definitely wasn't like that upstate and uh, Buffalo but I think just like Dave all does a good job of just preaching to us of just like and my dad does the same thing of just like not riding like the highs and the lows of the right. game of football right. because you know if you get too low like when you're in injury reserve it's a tough time or practice squad like you know sometimes you won't make it out and if you ride too high you know when you're doing good then you might lose some work ethic or not like work hard and stuff. So, you know, I, I try to do my best of just like staying steady, you know, kind of like tuning out all like the outside noise of just like, oh, you're so great or oh, you suck so bad, you know, and just like continue just to work, work, work every day. Cause like eventually like that work's gonna come to light for, and I, I'm a firm believer in that for many people. Like when the opportunity comes, whether it's four years from now or five or next week or whenever, like if, if you were working, like when it comes time for the opportunity, it's gonna show. So, you know, I was just, you know, luckily I got my opportunity and uh, Dave, all the coaching staff and the players uh, gave it to me and kind of opened me with or welcomed me with open arms. And, you know, I just try to take that opportunity and run with it. So. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's that, that's that motto. And it sounds like you embrace that fully because mm -hmm. you had your, you know, your ups and downs in the league already. Yeah. And you're young still. Yeah. You know, you got a long career, mm -hmm. I think, in front of you. When you got to the Giants, I know you heard the folklore of uh, Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he somebody that you watched when you were a little mm -hmm. bit younger? Yeah, uh, for, for sure. I mean, I remember literally watching Odell battle with Josh Norman and, yeah. like, all the people here that and, like, going crazy. Sure. Yeah, like, I was in high school when that was happening. So, like, it was just kind of crazy to, like, now be in the same locker room and hearing the stories. And he's actually in my agency. We had the same agent. So just, like, being able just to, like, kind of – pick the brain and see the work ethic and just like from all these vet players like was definitely just like a cool thing that I was able to experience. Odell, I, I played with Odell. He was a kid that always worked and I would always yeah. talk to younger kids mm -hmm. about, you know, of course y'all see the one-handed catches, but mm -hmm. he works at yeah, it yeah. consistently yeah. and he's, t he's tried and true with that. 
also know you have a youth camp that you just did. Mm-hmm. Can you explain that? Where was it at? And yeah. you know, what, what was that about? Uh, it was down in uh, Rumson, New Jersey, I'm pretty sure. And I plan on having another one soon. Uh, I'll probably have one back on the West Coast and then another one here in New York or Jersey. I still have to decide a location. But, uh, you know, it was just a, a big part of me just to be able to just like have fun and play with kids and just like give back. Because I remember being their age and just I, my eyes would light up every time I saw one of my dad's teammates. Like, and you know, like back then he played on the Cardinals for a little bit. And that's when I was like, had probably some of the best memories and just seeing like Leif Fitzgerald and Anquan Bolden yeah, yeah. and Kurt Warner and all those people. Like I was just like, every time I saw him, I was just like st- stuck on their hip. Like, Hey, like, can I talk to you? Like, you know, and just like, it was like so cool. So I'm like, you know, I know that kids feel like this, especially in New York, you know, like we have some awesome fans here and dedicated fans. So, you know, I just want to be able to give back and uh, spend some time with them. So. So you, you named some of the guys in Buffalo that you were around, Gabe Davis and mm-hmm. other guys that you were around there. When you got here, I know mm-hmm. Sterling was here. Who are the guys that kind of helped you bring you along mm-hmm. in this building? Because I've been trading in the middle of the season. Yeah, That's yeah. a lot. Just yeah. Basically, you dropping one life, mm-hmm. picking up another yeah. life nah. without missing a beat. Because yeah. you got to go to work. You got to Right away. Who was the guy, I guess, that helped kind of help with, yeah. with that buffer, that transition yeah. into a new team? I would say a lot of the receiver room, man. I mean, Shep was a, a huge role in it, just kind of helped me acclimate to like how things worked here, you know, practices, like what to do, what not to do. And he's also been around a bunch of vet guys himself of playing with the Victor Cruz and Odell's and stuff. So he would kind of help me like, hey, when you're out like this or do this, do this route this way and use this footwork. So he was a huge help. I mean, Slayton and um, was just a, a big help at just able to continue to get the offense down because, you know, he was good with it and just like the X's and O's and stuff. And then just getting that chemistry down with Daniel as well was just a, a huge part of it. So. All right, so last question. Mm-hmm. I know you're married, you got a couple of kids. Yeah. Um, there's going to be some time where you have off. You looking to do anything with the fam? You looking to go anywhere? <laughs> Look, I always recommend guys to get away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go get away from football so yeah. when you come back, you're rejuvenated, mm-hmm. and that focus is turned all the way yeah, back yeah, up again. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I usually try to. I think this year uh, we just had our second baby, so. Um, oh, yeah, I just had a congrats yes, for yeah, my fault. So she's mm-hmm. uh, two two months now nine nine weeks old oh, so y'all ain't uh, going nowhere yeah so uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a little tough we're going out to to oregon for my brother's graduation so um we're gonna go out and see that and see some of her family and then after that um you know we'll be out in arizona just working and um uh, that's kind of like my time where like throughout the week you know i'm pushing it grinding like going hard and on weekends you know we kind of um me and wifey take our own time to you know go on dates or you know go see different uh spots or like cool little events or something like that and hang out with friends and stuff so um but i mean the closer i get to camp is like the more it's like all right like it, it's, it's yeah, go time like i gotta really yeah. like lock in that focus like be in the best shape because i want to hit camp like running and you know like i i definitely though after otas like that week week and a half it's definitely like a a little break to yeah, rejuvenate, sure. mm-hmm. get your body back right and then hit the ground running so, no doubt bro yeah well nice talking to you thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time in the player's corner on the giants huddle podcast